योग वशिष्ठ रामा कंटिन्यूड ओ होली वन वॉट एवर अपियर्स टू बी परमानेंट और ट्रांसियंट इन दिस वर्ल्ड इट इज ऑल लाइक अ ड्रीम वॉट इज अ क्रिएटर टूडे वॉज अ माउंटेन बिफोर वॉट इज अ माउंटेन टूडे बिकम्स अ होल इन द अर्थ इन अ शॉर्ट वाइल्ड वॉट इज अ डेंस फॉरेस्ट टूडे इज सून ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू अ बिग सिटी What is fertile soil now becomes arid desert. Similar is the change in one's body and in one's lifestyle and fortune. This life and death cycle appears to be skillful dancer whose skirt is made up of living souls, and her dancing gestures consist of lifting the souls up to heaven, hurling them around in hell. or bringing them back to this earth all the mighty deeds even the great religious rites that people perform here are soon consigned to one's memory human beings are born as animals and vice versa gods lose their divinity what is unchanging here i see even the creator brahma the protector vishnu and the redeemer rudra and others in exorably going towards destruction in this world sense objects appear to be pleasant to one only till he remembers this inevitable destruction just as a child playing with earth makes different designs with a cold the ordainer of the universe keeps creating new things and destroying them soon this perception of the defects of the world has changed destroyed and the undesirable tendencies in the mind and therefore desire for sense pleasure does not arise in any mind even as a mirage do not appear on the surface of the water the world and its delights appear bitter to me i am not fond of wandering in the pleasure gardens i do not relish the company of girls i do not value the acquisition of wealth i wish to remain at peace with myself i am constantly inquiring how can i wean my heart completely away from even thinking of this ever changing phantasm and which is called the world i do not long for that nor do i long to live i remain as i am free from the fear of lust what shall i do with the kingdom pleasure or wealth all of which are playthings of egotism which is absent in me if i do not get established in wisdom now when shall another opportunity arise for indulgence in sense pleasure poisons the mind in such a way that its effects last several lifetimes only the man of self knowledge is free from this therefore o sage i pray to thee instruct me in such a way that i forever be free from anguish fear and distress with the light of your instruction destroy the darkness of ignorance in my heart by reflecting on the pitiable fate of living beings thus fallen into the dreadful pit of sorrow i am filled with grief my mind is confused i shudder and at every step i am afraid i have given up everything but i have not established myself in wisdom hence i am partly caught and partly freed i am like a tree that has been cut but not severed from its root i wish to restrain my mind but do not have the wisdom to do so hence please tell me what is the condition or state in which one does not experience any grief 
how can one who is involved in this world and its activities as i am reach the supreme state of peace and bliss what is that attitude that enables one not to be influenced by various kinds of activities and experiences please tell me how do you people who are enlightened live in this world how can the mind be freed from lust and made to view the world both as one's own self and able and also as no more valuable than a blade of grass the biography of which great one shall we study in order to learn the path of wisdom how should one live in this world holy sir instruct me in that wisdom which will enable my otherwise restless mind to be steady like a mountain you are an enlightened being instruct me so that i may never again be sunk in the grief obviously in this world full of pain and death how does it become a source of joy but befuddling one's heart the mind is obviously full of impurities how can it be cleansed and with that cleanser prescribed by what great sage how should one live here so as to not fall a victim to the queen currents of love and hate obviously there is a secret that enables one to remain unaffected by the grief and suffering in this world even as mercury is not affected when it is thrown into the fire what is that secret what is the secret that counteracts the habit of the mind that is spread out in form of this universe who are those heroes who have freed themselves from delusion and what methods do they adopt to free themselves if you consider that i am neither fit nor capable of understanding this i shall fast unto death having said so rama remained silent valmiki continued all those who had assembled in the court were highly inspired by the flaming words of rama's wisdom which is capable of dispelling the delusion of the mind they felt as if they themselves had been rid of all the doubts and deluded misunderstanding they drank the nectarine words of rama with great delight as they sat in the court listening to rama's words it appeared as though they were no longer living beings but painted figures they were so still with rapt attention who listened to rama's discourse sages like vasishta vishwamitra the ministers members of the royal family including king dasharatha citizens holy ones servants birds animal pets the horses of the royal stable and the celestials including the perfected sages and heavenly musicians surely even the king of heaven and the chief of nether would listen to rama the perfected sages in the assembly said surely the answers that the holy ones are about to give to the weighty and wise questions of rama are worthy of being heard by all the beings in the universe o sages come come let us all gather in the court of king dasharatha to listen to the answer of supreme sage vasishtha hearing this all the sages of the world hastened to the court where they were duly received honored and seated in the court surely if in our heart the lofty wisdom of rama is not reflected 
we shall indeed be the losers whatever be our abilities and faculties we shall hereby prove that we have lost our intelligence we will see what sage vishwamitra said tomorrow jai gurudev